Ooh, what's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of a Funko Popcast. I am DK Wrestler. And I'm MD Shady. And in today's podcast, of course, as shown in the title, it is the top 10 Funko Pops of October 2023. Already, we are at the end of October, which means we basically only have two months left of the year of 2023. And let me tell you, for October, for the most part, I feel like there's been quite a bit of banger pops. We still have basically technically a week to go as we're recording this because we're one week before Halloween. But nonetheless, we still got a great selection, although would have been nice to see those redeemable pops for the Funko Ween Series 1 drop to be confirmed. But all the pops we're talking about range from October 3rd to October 23rd, which is yesterday as we're recording this. So starting off with the first section of Funko Pops ranging from October 3rd to October 6th. So first off on October 3rd, Funko had confirmed a set of pops for Diablo 4, which features pops of Inarius, Druid, Treasure Goblin, a 6-inch Lilith, and then a Glow-in-the-Dark 6-inch Lilith that's exclusive to Amazon. And then they also announced cell shading pops for the Disney Reimagined set, which features pops of Captain America and Black Panther for Marvel, Tiana and Mickey Mouse for Disney itself, and then an RQD2 and C-3PO 2-pack and Boba Fett for Star Wars, in which all those will be exclusive to Target. Then on October 4th, Funko had announced a set of pops for, I believe it's called Monster High for the Retro Toys lineup, which has Draculaura, Frankie Stein, and Claudine Wolf along with pops for Mad Max, The Road Warrior, which features Max, Lord Humongous, Wes, and a Lord Wolf Pop Rides. They also confirmed the mascot pops for the Box of Fun, which is, of course, the non-glow-in-the-dark version of the heavy metal mascots, which, of course, are Rusty Steel, Jack Carver, Sid Ficious, and Phil D. Graves. Entertainment Earth would confirm their own exclusive pops of a glow-in-the-dark Kento Nanami from Jujutsu Kaisen, I believe, and then a Shadow land daredevil from the marvel lineup we have books a million announcing their own exclusive black light pop of baby clown from killer clowns from outer space then on october 5th funko confirms more pops of course for funko ween which will be a reoccurring trend for this month which we have a new set of haunted mansion pops that features phineas ezra Gus Hatbox Ghost, Madam Leota, and a Glow in the Dark Hatbox Ghost that will be exclusive to Funko HQ. And then Funko finally confirmed the new McNuggets Pops, which of course are Witch, Vampire, McBoo, and Mummy McNugget. And then the last day of this section, we have October 6th. The first two Pops announced for Season 2 of Disney Plus's Loki, which features Pops of a Temporal Core Suit Mobius and Loki. The Funko Shop had announced their own exclusive Pop of an Eddie Van Halen, and then Entertainment Earth had announced their own exclusive pop of Spinneret for the Marvel lineup. So starting off with the Diablo 4 Pops, these are pretty decent, and especially the Lilith. People were excited about this because we thought we were getting Lilith for San Diego Comic-Con, but that was mixed up with a different Lilith. Now we have the Lilith that everyone was talking about, and this is pretty cool. I've seen the common one at our local GameStop recently, and it's a pretty decent pop. Then we have the new Cell Shading Pops, and these are also pretty decent. Once again, I actually seen the Disney ones recently at our local GameStop here in Canada, since a lot of Target shared exclusives go to GameStop. For the most part, this is a pretty decent idea. I do kind of like the way the Star Wars ones look more than the other ones. Then we have the Monster High Pops, and these are pretty cool looking pops. Then we have the Mad Max Road Warrior Pops, and these also look pretty cool, especially with the Pop Rides, because I feel like Mad Max is known for having their cool Pop Rides in the set. And then something that I didn't even think about while talking about the -the Glow-in-the-Dark versions was the idea of non-Glow-in-the-Dark versions of the Heavy Metal mascots. These are really cool, and I kind of figured when they announced the box of fun for New York Comic Con that this would be the case and now it's like I kind of want to get these but at the same time of course Funko Shop only ships in the US it'd be paying an arm and a leg just to get one of these boxes and I believe if I'm not mistaken the only ones that have sold out were Jack Carver and Phil D. Graves and then we have the Entertainment Earth exclusives of Kento Nanami and Shadowland Daredevil these are some okay pops I do like the Daredevil more I really like the black on the red instead of the other way around and then the black light baby clown from killer cons from outer space 
that's a pretty cool looking pop and i really like the choices of colors involved with this pop the new haunted mansion pops these are some pretty detailed pops normally you know it's like oh more haunted mansion pops but there's something about this that i really like more and i believe now as i think about this is probably the new haunted mansion disney plus movie that came out so that's probably what these are based off of instead of the normal like disney rides then we have the mcnuggets pops which i won't go into too much detail this is going to be an md shady thing but these are all right then the new loki pops this is really cool especially because that week these pops were announced the new season of loki came out and all i'm going to say is that i really enjoy this season and i think it's actually so far better than the entire season one and season one was amazing kind of figured like when i watched that first episode that like these would be probably like the first couple of pops that come out but i'll mention my opinions of the pops also when we get to more loki pops during this pod the new eddie van halen this is okay i mean i feel like it's just almost identical to the other one that's a common except you get the white guitar instead of the red guitar which I feel like when you think of Eddie Van Halen, you think of his red guitar. So like, unless you're a huge fan of Eddie Van Halen, I don't think it's entirely necessary to have this one in your collection unless you don't have the original one. And then we have Spinneret from the Marvel lineup, but this is actually a pretty cool looking pop. I really like how that red pops out from the white and just overall the way it looks where you have her on the web and it's like it's attached to two buildings, but she's using it as like a catapult of some sort. All right, starting off with the Diablo Pops, these are pretty dang sweet. There's a lot of detail going into these, and a couple of my coworkers have been playing Diablo, so I've seen some of their game footage, and it honestly seems like it's an awesome game. So I might have to try it out, and then I don't know if I fall in love with it. I might need to get these Pops. The Marvel Pops with Black Panther as well as Captain America. I like the way that they've gone with the cell shading on these. I think that it's a, a different take, especially when it comes to Funko Pops. The two Disney Pops, and these are okay. I don't think they're anything too crazy, but they're definitely okay, especially for the winter season coming up. And then we have the Star Wars Pops, and I really like these. The Boba Fett, I think, is the best out of these. I just love the way that you have those lines added on there to show the uh, cell shading. I think that that's just gorgeous. And then we have the Monster High Pops, and I missed what you said at the beginning. Did you say these are part of retro toys or animation i think in the description on instagram they mentioned that these are a part of the retro toys lineup okay so i wasn't sure if they were going to go with retro toys or if they were going to go with animation and i like that they went with retro toys i mean monster high dolls are now 13 years old that i guess could be almost put into like as a retro toy i mean 13 years is quite a bit of time so that makes sense and this is honestly kind of a shock to me when i seen this announcement and yeah these pops look really cool i definitely think that we could see a lot of different exclusives with other characters down the line then we have the mad max pops and these look pretty decent i don't really know a ton about this version of mad max but i think they look all right and then we have the heavy metal mascots these are wicked you guys knew our opinions about the original Original ones, but now we have these non glow ones. And I like the way that this box is set up how you get to choose your mascot, and then you get two pops and three sodas. I think that's really cool. I wish I could get my hand on one of these boxes. Then we have the Jujutsu Kaisen pop, and this is pretty cool. I like the way that this looks. I like the glow aspect of it, where it's basically just whatever is going on with his hand. I think this is a pretty good pop. And then we have the Daredevil, and this one's okay. I don't love this pop, and I think there's been better Daredevils, but it's not absolutely. Absolutely terrible at all. Then we have the Blacklight Baby Clown, and this is really wicked. I really enjoy how the molding has gone on for this pop, and I think that the Blacklight on this pop looks amazing as well. Then we have the Haunted Mansion Pops, and these are pretty decent. The detail that has gone into these is definitely a lot better than we've seen with the previous Haunted Mansion Pops from years ago, but I almost like those ones better. Then we have the new Halloween McNuggets, and these are all awesome. I do own all four of these pops. The Witch and the Vampire, I think, are my two favorite favorites out of this set but i mean you can't go wrong with more mcnuggets it's every time funko is going to produce them i'm definitely going to buy them because I, I love the mcnugget pops and then we have the two new loki pops and i actually haven't even finished season one of loki i was kind of hard for me to get into but i might have to go back to season one and then start watching season two especially if it is getting good praise from dk then next we have the new Eddie Van Halen pop, and I like this one. I do own the original one. Then we have Spinneret, and this is pretty dang sweet as well. Like DK said, with the webs there, I think that that's really cool and how she's kind of like standing on top of it, and you have that clear base so you can totally get that feel that she is actually in air. I think that that is great, and this is a pretty sweet pop. 
All right, so now moving on to the next section of October Funko Pops, ranging from October 9th to October 13th. So first off for October 9th, Funko continues Funko Ween reveals with Godzilla Pops. I think it's for Godzilla Up Point, or I forget exactly what it's called, but it's a new Godzilla thing that's going on, which we have Pops of Godzilla Ultima, May Camino with Phelps II, and then two versions of Godzilla Ultima with Heat Ray, where one of them will be a glow-in-the-dark version exclusive to the Funko shop. And then Funko Europe had announced their own, I guess, exclusive pop, or it's at least a common only available in Europe, of Michael McIntyre. Then on October 10th, Funko had confirmed the pops for Blackpink, which features pops of Jizzo, Jenny, Rose, and Lisa. And then Drop and Funko had confirmed the redeemable pops for the Back to the Future Funko Series 1 NFT set, which features legendary pops of Doc 1885, Griff 2015, George McFly, and Lorraine Baines in a prom dress limited to 1,900 pieces, while the grail of 999 pieces is Marty under cover and then the royalty being freddy funko as doc with helmet limited to 2500 pieces then on october 11th the funko shop had confirmed their own exclusive pops of a pop classics of rudolph the red nosed reindeer a die cast joker for the dc comics lineup with a silver chase and then a facet iron man for the disney 100 set and then on October 13th, Hot Topic had announced their own exclusive pops for Hot Topic Scare Fair, which features pops of Chucky and Tiffany as kind of a half and half pop, Jojo the Clownzilla from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, Michael Behind Hedge from Halloween, Regan Puking from The Exorcist, a Black Light Sam from Trick or Treat, and a Black Light Xenomorph from Alien. And then last but not least for this day and this section of Pops, we have ourselves Obi from Loki Season 2. So kicking off with the Godzilla Pops, these are pretty decent, especially the one with the heat ray, and especially there's going to be one that's glow in the dark, which I'm sure will look nice. I believe they did do something similar to this to the for the Godzilla versus Kong lineup, so it's pretty cool that they're kind of doing that again, but it seems like it's just remolding or repurposing that same pop, but nonetheless still pretty cool. Michael McIntyre, I don't know anything about this person. I didn't even really read the description all that much to see whether it's a part of, let's say, the Icons lineup, or maybe he's a comedian so it's a new comedian's pop i don't exactly know but nonetheless i do like how they have the eyes kind of squinted as if you were to do some sort of facial expression then we have the black pink pops and i mean this is one of those things that funko's been doing where we've seen the pops for months now but for some reason they decide to announce them now when they're out instead of beforehand to give it some hype before it gets released i don't know what's going on there i mean maybe they're still trying to work on their social media team after like firing three quarters of them at the beginning of the year but nonetheless, I've never really heard of Blackpink at all. The Back to the Future Pops, I'm not going to go into description about, considering that I've done multiple videos at this point of talking about how amazing these pops are, in my opinion, and how great they all look, especially how we actually have a George McFly pop, which is pretty crazy because if you've watched those videos, I've went into description of how crazy that is. And nonetheless, these are some pretty cool pops, and I can't wait to get every single one of them since it will be my first master set, meaning that it will be my first Freddy Funko I added to my collection. Then the classics Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and I'm not going to crap on this because this is kind of an example of pop that I would like to see in the classics lineup because even though we have the new Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer pop, this is a pop that hasn't been made in probably a decade, so it makes sense for it to be a part of the classics lineup. Then the die-cast Joker pops, uh, they're all right. I mean, it's cool that they kind of brought back the look of the Joker with the swirly eyes, but at the same time, I now as I think about I think they did that for the Joker Classics pop. And then the Facet Iron Man. What's so weird about the Facet pop is they make so many Facet pops. And part of me is like, you know, I don't want to get this set. But the only way that I want to get it is if they make like a Toy Story Facet pop. And I'm really surprised that they haven't done that yet. But at the same time, I'm thinking like, please don't make a Facet pop of Toy Story. Because then I'm kind of forced to get a Facet pop. But nonetheless, I mean, this one's all right. It kind of looks weird in the specification for Iron Man. But nonetheless, I guess it's all right. Then we have the 
Hot Topic Scare Fair exclusives. And this was a really cool like mini convention, I'm going to call it, that they had. And first off with the Chucky Tiffany, I do enjoy when Funko does these half and half pops. Basically, all they did was just mash them together and make it black and white, which I do like that effect. Jojo the Clownzilla, that looks pretty cool. And I can't exactly tell whether it's a six inch or not, but it's cool to introduce these new clowns for the lineup instead of making repeats of already existing ones. Michael Behind the Hedge has gotten a lot of slack as of late on social media because of, I guess, the way that they did the mask and how it's not exactly how the mask should be for Halloween for like where the chin is but nonetheless i mean it was a cool idea at first of like the idea of michael behind the hedge because it's one of the beginning scenes of the first halloween movie then we have regan puking and this is actually pretty awesome i love the idea that they did just a standalone pop of regan puking instead of really the only way i think you can get it is with that new regan in the bed moments or whatever that they did as a funko shop exclusive then we have the black light sam this is pretty cool i really enjoy the choices of colors that they did especially keeping the head orange i think that makes sense for sure and then the black light xenomorph this is pretty decent i kind of like the idea of it being green and blue especially having blue around the teeth and where the eyes are i think it might pop out very well and then last but not least for this day ob which i was really hoping when i seen that first episode of season two of loki that they would make a pop i was like okay they'll probably make it a convention exclusive for those that might not know and especially md ob is played by the same guy who was short round in indiana jones 2 and data in the goonies and when i seen the trailer for this i was like i feel like this is going to be such a perfect character for this actor and it's like God, now it's like i feel like my favorite character in the show i hope something good happens with them in season two i hope he's not one of those characters that ends up dying at the end of the season i i swear if that ends up happening and someone from marvel's listening to this and thinking ha, 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 he doesn't know what's going to happen i'm going to be mad about that obi's awesome Okay, so we got new Godzilla pops, and these are pretty interesting, especially with the May Camino with Pelops 2. That's a really interesting character and the buddy itself. So I might have to check this out because that's just such an interesting buddy. Like, it's like, is that a cat? What is that thing? And it's like very cartoonish. But the glow in the dark pop, I think that that thing is going to be awesome. Hopefully the glow is good on that. Blue is known for not being amazing, but I think if it is a good glow that that pop will be sweet. Then we have Michael McIntyre, and I have no idea who this is either, but the pop itself doesn't look bad. Then we have the black pink pops, and I have no clue who they are. I've never heard of them. Which is surprising because I feel like I'm pretty up to date with music knowledge, but yeah, I don't know who these people are, but the pops themselves are all right. Then we have the Back to the Future NFT drop, and we did do a two-part video on the channel opening up packs of these, so if you haven't watched those videos, go check them out. They are both pretty decent. You definitely want to check them out, and this set is awesome of course dk is going for the master set of these pops and for good reasons i mean you got doc 1885 that pop looks awesome griff 2015 i think that that is maybe my favorite from the set that one looks so good george mcfly as a pop is amazing to see lorraine that pop is pretty decent as well and then of course the grail marty undercover that is a sweet pop and then the freddy funko as doc brown with the helmet is also amazing yeah hopefully dk can get this pop in his collection that is really sweet then we have the classics pop of rudolph and i got to agree with dk this makes sense to be a classics pop but i don't like it and the reason for that is because i actually own the original pop so i don't really have a need to actually go out and buy this which is unfortunate because we don't get classics announcements very often then we have the die cash joker and i like the way that this figure looks the die cast pops are really starting to fail me though like i don't know it's, there's just nothing new with them and the chase versions of of course just being silver i understand it because die cast obviously is a silver metal but uh i don't know i think the chases could be a lot better than what we see with those then we have the facet iron man and this is okay it makes sense iron man is a big seller so funko knows that they can sell this but at the same time if you look at the body and like kind of disregard the helmet or even add the helmet into this discussion it almost just looks like a normal iron man pop because of the way the iron man outfit 
is made it's metal and it's all these different like intertwined pieces and then we're moving into the scare fair from hot topic and the first pop we have is the chucky slash tiffany and this is really interesting i like the way that they've done this i like the black and white too i think that that makes it a lot easier to kind of blend these two characters together jojo and this pop is awesome the killer clown pops never fail i mean the detail on them is amazing and they look pretty intimidating they're always pretty dang scary and that's no exception with jojo then we have the michael behind the hedge and yeah i can understand what dk was talking about because when i first seen this pop i thought it was kind of hilarious rather than like scary or intimidating it just looks so weird but uh it does kind of remind me of the homer in hedges the regan puking and this is awesome i love this pop i think that the detail on the face is great even the skin on the hands and the legs slash feet looks really cool and then of course you have that translucent puke coming out and uh this pop is wicked though i hate the exorcist and then we have the blacklight sam pop this is pretty cool of course keeping the theme with the orange head it makes the most sense the pink body is interesting because it almost looks like he's kind of just wearing like pajama onesies almost but that being said i think that the colorway on this is still pretty good then we have the blacklight xenomorph and i love this pop i think this looks so cool the green i think is going to look amazing with the blue this is a pop that i would definitely consider adding to my collection because i think that this thing is going to look amazing under a blacklight and then we have the character from Loki, I forget what DK said his name was. OB. OB. Okay. This is an interesting character. Of course, I don't know anything about it, but the way that the pop looks is definitely interesting and makes me want to watch Loki even more now, especially when I know now who the actor is. That's pretty dang cool. All right, so now for the last section of Funko Pops before we move on to the top 10 list, which range from October 16th to October 23rd, which was yesterday as we were recording this. Starting off October 16th, Funko had announced for Funko Fridays a new Ahsoka Tano with two lightsabers for the Clone Wars, which of course will be exclusive to Target. And then continuing with Funko Ween reveals, we have pops for the horror movie Black Phone, which has pops of the Grabber with Chase, a Grabber with alternate outfit. Fit, and then a red molding version of the grabber which will be exclusive to the Funko shop. October 17th we have ourselves a new set of Dragon Ball Z pops which has pops of Jinyu, Galdo, Rakom, Berter, and Geese with all of them having separate pops as glow-in-the-dark versions exclusive to Entertainment Earth and then all the singular pops in a five pack exclusive to GameStop. Funko confirmed the regular Baby Clown and Fatso Pops for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. October 18th, Funko announced the very last pop for the Civil War set exclusive to Amazon, which of course is Captain America. Chalice Collectibles announced their own exclusive pop of Minoru Mineta from My Hero Academia with a glow-in-the-dark chase. And then Funko announced the next two pops, I'm not sure if it's the last two now as I think about it, for the Hyperspace Hero set, which we have ourselves Luke Skywalker with T-47 Airspeeder and Anakin Skywalker with Naboo Starfighter, both exclusive to Amazon. Then on October 19th, the Pokemon Center announced their own exclusive pop of a pearlescent Mewtwo. October 20th, Funko had announced 8-bit pops of Jubilee and Magneto for the X-Men 97 set, which is exclusive to Target. They also announced another set of low-key Season 2 pops, which we have Sylvie, Renslayer with Ms. Minutes, and Victor Timely. Then the Funko Shop announced their own exclusive pop of a glow-in-the-dark Sasuke Uchiha, and then Box Lunch announced their own exclusive pop of a Kakashi with Pakun, which both those two pops were a part of Naruto Shippuden. Then October 23rd, Box Lunch had announced their own exclusive pop of a glow-in-the-dark Sauron from Lord of the Rings. And then Funko continues Funko Ween reveals with foodies pops of Jolly Ranchers, Reese's, and Whoppers. And then last but not least, Hot Topic had announced their own exclusive pop of a six-inch Blue Eyes Toon Dragon that's glow-in-the-dark from the Yu-Gi-Oh! lineup. So kicking off with the Ahsoka Tano, this is mad because we've seen a lot of Ahsoka Tanos. And of course, yes, this year is the anniversary of the Clone Wars. At least it's 15 years for the series, but on the glam shot, it's talking about 20 years. So are they including Attack of the Clones also, which technically in 2023, it's 21 years? I don't exactly know, but I felt like you could have done something a little bit better than just another Ahsoka Pops. Black Phone Pops. These are actually pretty cool, especially because this is something I think MD predicted on one of our Comic-Con predictions videos, but now that it's actually having a full set of pops, this is really cool. The pops look excellent, and it's something very refreshing for horror movie fans, and I'm actually kind of digging the Funko Shop exclusive, not gonna lie. 
And then we have the Dragon Ball Z Pops. These are okay. It's not Goku, Vegeta's, Piccolo's, Cell, any characters that had at least 20 Pops. It seems like characters that we've never had Pops before. But I mean, you make the singular ones. And then there's Glow in the Dark versions. And then there's those same singular ones, but slapped into a five pack only exclusive to GameStop. This is kind of unnecessary. It's like, do you need all, I guess at this point, 15 of the pops i don't exactly think so if you're gonna get all five of the singular ones you might as well go to gamestop and get the five pack if you only want a couple of the singular characters because they may be your favorites then just get one of the singular ones and if you just want that specification then you might as well get all the singular ones but get them off entertainment earth and not get the singular ones or the five pack and then the killer clowns from outer space pops i mean we talked about the black light baby clown now we have the regular version and this is pretty cool and the fat so is also the same then we have captain america now we know what the set looks like all together and this isn't too bad but yeah i mean for those that have been waiting a while i mean i guess now is the time since like half the set is on sale on amazon then we have mineta from my hero academia holy shit, finally we have a mineta pop from my hero academia once again this is one of those cases like i mentioned with md with black phone i predicted this so many times for comic-con exclusives just thinking like it may be a comic-con exclusive because we've been waiting so long for it now we have it here which is very refreshing because mineta is one of those memorable characters from my hero academia and it looks pretty decent the glow in the dark aspect it's not too bad i felt like they could have made it a little bit better like maybe even add a little bit of a base to it like not just like the way that it is right now but like of course with this quirk then we have the hyperspace heroes pops and these are pretty decent the luke skywalker it's something like we've kind of already seen but not at the same time but this anakin skywalker is something that i knew about for a little bit because they tease these i believe at san diego comic-con with concepts and i was like man i can't wait until the day that we talk about a glam shot of this anakin skywalker and now it's finally here this is really cool anakin in the phantom menace with r2d2 in there pearlescent mewtwo I actually almost forgot about the existence of Pearlescent Pops before this got announced because it actually was been a huge gap since the last Pearlescent Pop. But nonetheless, it's like, God, why is this even a thing? Speaking of Pops we don't need of, why the f*** are we still getting 8-bit Pops in 2023? A lot of the 8-bit Pops have been sitting on shelves. This will be no exception, especially because a lot of Target exclusives are already sitting on shelves. Then we have low key season two pops, which this is a bit of a, a bright side to this section of Funko Pops. And the funny thing about this is that I didn't even get a chance to watch the episode before these certain set of pops. So when I finally got to uh, watch the episode a couple of days ago, I was like, OK, this is really cool, even though I have seen like quite a bit of this in the trailer. But seeing like Victor Timely and then Renslayer with the new version of Ms. Minutes, these are pretty cool. Then we have the Naruto pops that were exclusive to both Box Lunch and the Funko shop i do like the funko shop exclusive glow in the dark one this is pretty cool with the base and especially making the eyes being the part that glows in the dark that's pretty cool and then the box lunch exclusive being like a pop and buddy that's also pretty cool sauron from lord of the rings this is a pretty decent pop and i believe the only thing that glows is the eyes and like the nose which i guess isn't too bad but nonetheless i mean the lord of the rings pops as of late have been really cool especially the frodo that they did for san diego comic-con and now we have the foodies pops, which is a little bit of a love-hate relationship with MD Shady. Nonetheless, I mean, you got to acknowledge some of these ad icons that don't really have mascots, though. Even though there are some that do have mascots, you can actually see on the Jolly Ranchers packet, there are some mascots there. This is pretty decent for the Jolly Ranchers, but I will have to mention, you know what? I'll mention about the Whoppers first. That's all right. But the Reese's, this is pretty cool. It's actually a pop I'm kind of considered getting, which is kind of a rare occurrence for me to get a lot of ad icons pops, mainly because i love reese's so i feel like them actually making a funko pop involved with reese's is pretty cool and then last but not least is a blue eyes toon dragon glow in the dark pop exclusive to hot topic this is pretty cool i love the way that this looks where the color is actually probably better than both the metallic version and the common version that they did for the set i think for some reason my only gripe is the fact that it's a six inch pop considering the other two are four inch pops so it just doesn't look good when you put all them side by side and especially if you take them out of box and do like a photo with it this one's going to be more massive than the other two 
All right, so starting off with the Ahsoka pop. Yeah, this is a little lackluster. We've definitely had better Ahsoka pops, but it is to be expected that we will see some Ahsoka pops, especially with the new series. And the Clone Wars 20th anniversary, I would assume that the reason for that is because of the Clone Wars Cartoon Network series, which came out in 2003. So that would be 20 years. I think that that's the one that makes the most sense. Then we have the Black Phone Pops, and these are looking pretty sweet. I like every single one of these pops. The chase is pretty cool, how you get the horns rather than the glasses and the hat. And then that red one is pretty interesting as well. And then we have the Ginyu Force, and this is pretty dang sweet. I haven't really been excited for Dragon Ball Z pops in uh, quite some time, but I do really enjoy these. But I do think that there are ways that could be done to make it better. I really like the five pack because I think it makes sense for these to be in a five pack. But I think that you don't need to have the singular pops and you could probably just make the five pack be the glow in the dark ones. And then that kind of just sums it all up. It's just one product that Funko has to make and it'd probably sell a lot better that way. But that being said, I do like all five of these pops. I think I do have a bit of a bias towards Birder being my favorite because I did have an action figure of him as a little kid and uh, I really enjoyed that action figure. So yeah, this is a really cool set. If I was still collecting Dragon Ball Z pops, I would 100% want to get that five pack then we have some more killer clowns from outer space pops and these are pretty cool i do really enjoy the baby clone of course the black light one is awesome but the regular one is still pretty dang sweet and then we finally have the last piece to the civil war set with captain america so now we can see how it looks all finally together and this feels like it's taken way too long to finally get all 12 pieces but the set itself is not too bad and then we have this My Hero Academia character. I don't think I actually know about this character. I haven't gone too far into My Hero Academia, only the first couple seasons, or at least I don't remember this character, but it is cool that we are seeing a chase with it. And of course, it is the normal Chalice Collectibles treatment where it is just a glow that dark chase, but that is fine. And then we have the Hyperspace Heroes Pops, and these are pretty sweet. Luke is pretty sweet. But then I think that the best one is, of course, Anakin with R2-D2 in the back there. That is pretty dang cool. I like the way that the outfit looks with this. And yeah, pretty good. Then we have the Pearlescent Mewtwo, and uh, these Pearlescent Pops is just ridiculous for Pokemon. I understand, kind of, because they, they don't look too bad, but it's just so unnecessary. Give us other Pokemon or give us shiny versions, what people have been asking for, basically since Pokemon Pops first got announced, that people want to see shiny versions of Pokemon Pops. And then we have the X-Men 97 8-Bit Pops, and this was really interesting. I was surprised to see new 8-Bit Pops. I kind of wish that Funko would just do like a small figure line of 8-Bit characters rather than actually making them Pops, because they don't really look like Pops, and they're so much different. The heads aren't hollow, so they're very heavy figures. I guess it does make sense for X-Men 97. There was a ton of different X-Men games around this era that were, of course, 8-Bit or 16-Bit or 32 bit so these pops kind of make sense but i guess just kind of unnecessary at the same time and then we have more pops for loki season two and these are pretty interesting miss minutes noticing that she is black and white in this so that's definitely very interesting to me then we have a new sasuke pop and this is pretty cool i like how this looks but it's not anything too different than what we've seen with other sasuke pops in the past and we also have kakashi and this pop is sweet i really love the pose how he's sitting there with that book in his hand i think that the posing on this is just amazing speaking of pops that are amazing we got the glow in the dark sauron here and i know i usually f on lord of the rings but this thing is sweet i really like how this looks i like how it has a real metallic feel to it and i think that the glow on this is going to be extremely awesome i hope it glows very very well because i think think that this thing could be a candidate potentially for like a top 50 top 25 pops of the year i think this thing is wicked the ad icons with the foodies pops the jolly rancher bag ah, i don't love it like dk said there are kind of characters for jolly rancher that they could do instead even if it was like a three or a four or a five pack of like smaller pops i think that that could turn out interesting and then the reese's cup this is the same thing i'm pretty sure there is a mascot of some sorts for reese's that they could have done in instead of doing a foodies pop like this but i kind of like the colorway of the arms and the legs how they are like that peanut butter feel i think that that's okay and then we have the whoppers box and uh i don't like this one either i do prefer maltesers over whoppers so that could be the reason but this one 
one is just a little bit ridiculous. And then lastly, we have the Blue Eyes Toon Dragon Glow in the Dark Pop exclusive to Hot Topic. It is unfortunate that this is a six inch pop because it doesn't really need to be. But at the same time, it does make it a little bit different than the other Blue Eyes Toon Dragons that we've seen in the past. And I personally really, really like this one. I love how you have that like energy blast kind of building up in the mouth there. I think that that's wicked. And hopefully the glow on this is awesome because this is definitely a pop that me and DK are going to be adding to our collections. And of course, you don't want a pop that has a dull glow. You want that thing to, no pun intended, pop. All right. So now we're going to move over to the top 10 list. Of course, how we usually do this. We're going to go back and forth for our top 10 list. So I'll say my number 10, MD says is number 10, nine, nine, back and forth until we reach our number one pick for the top 10. Of course, like we mentioned, we still technically have a full week of October left as we are recording this. But of course, we don't know if there's going to be an update or not. And we don't know what pops are going to be announced as we are recording this. But nonetheless, I guess I will start off, of course, with my number 10 pick is the Funko Shop exclusive Glow in the Dark Godzilla. Godzilla Ultima with Heat Ray. I think this pop looks really cool. The glow is probably going to look pretty decent, but even though it is a nice looking pop, it is kind of something we've already seen previously with like the Godzilla versus Kong pops. So it's nothing entirely too exciting, but still a pretty decent pop, which is why it's at number 10 on my list. Coming in at number 10 on my list is the Books A Million exclusive Blacklight Baby Clown. I really like how the Blacklight version looks. I like the colors and I love the molding on this, how you have like the popcorn container and then he's like popping out of it. I think that that is so cool and it doesn't really look like a pop, but sometimes that can be a good thing, especially in cases like this. Coming in at number nine on my list is the Hot Topic Scarefare exclusive Regan Puking from The Exorcist. This is actually a pretty decent pop. A lot of cool details, including it throwing up, which is probably the most memorable scene when you think of The Exorcist. But I don't see myself getting this, which is why it's a little bit low on this list. Coming in at number nine on my list is the Box Lunch exclusive Glow in the Dark Sauron. This pop is awesome. Like I said, this could definitely be a contender for one of those pops that just looks the best from the year. And I'm hoping that the glow makes this pop look even better because I think that there's a possibility that this will be just an amazing pop. Coming in at number eight on my list is the Amazon exclusive Anakin Skywalker with Naboo Starfighter rides. This is really awesome. I mean, giving some love to the Phantom Menace. Really cool to see, obviously, the ship in pop form for the first time, a younger Anakin Skywalker. So it was really nice and I think definitely is my favorite pop as terms to the hyperspace hero set. Coming in at number eight on my list, limited to 2,500 pieces, is the Back to the Future NFT pop, the Freddy Funko as Doc Brown with helmet. This is awesome. I really like this version of Freddy Funko. I think it's a good one, and it's perfect for this set. And it's probably going to be DK's first Freddy Funko, so that kind of says a lot. Coming in at number seven on my list is the Chalice Collectibles exclusive Minoru Mineta from My Hero Academia. This pop's really cool. We finally have Mineta in pop form, one of those popular characters. Of course, it is the non-glow version because I don't really necessarily think that the glow was too necessary. But yeah, I thought this definitely deserved to be in the top 10 list. Coming in at number seven on my list is the Hot Topic Scarefare exclusive Blacklight Xenomorph. This pop is sweet. I mean, this thing would look cool in your collection, in box or out of box. I feel like when you shine that blacklight on it, this thing is going to look amazing. And if I do find one of these in the wild or maybe even at like a convention or a toy show, I think I'm going to pick it up. Coming in at number six on my list is the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup for the foodies lineup. Now, normally I wouldn't put these kind of pops not only on the top 10 list, but even kind of this high on the list, practically in the middle. But compared to the last four pops that I talked about, I have a more likely chance of wanting to actually buy this compared to the other four pops. But nonetheless, it wasn't going to make it into the top five. Number six on my list, I have the Target exclusive retro reimagined Boba Fett. This thing looks awesome. I'm a sucker for some cell shading, and I think that they did a marvelous job with it, with this pop. And this is going to be one of those pops that I might be able to show off on the channel. One of my coworkers, her husband, is a huge collector of Boba Fett, so I always keep an eye out for Boba Fett products that I can buy him. So if I find one of these, I'll probably pick it up and we can actually show it off. 
Coming in at number five on my list is the Chase version of the Grabber from Black Phone. This was a really exciting announcement for Funko collectors, and especially was really surprising to see that they are making Black Phone pops, even though the movie's been out for pretty close to a year now. So you would think they would have done it. Like I mentioned, it seems like a trend where they want to do products or do announcements after things have happened. So that was a little weird, but nonetheless, it's still cool to see this. It could have been any of the four pops not gonna lie but i like the chase one the best out of the four pops coming in at the halfway point at number five on my list i have the hot topic exclusive scare fair regan puking this thing is really cool like tk said the detail on this is wicked and it is a memorable scene from the exorcist and i think that the puking effect on this looks really cool i love how it's translucent i think that's the best way to get this pop done and they did a great job of it Coming in at number four on my list, the George McFly from Back to the Future, limited to 1,900 pieces for the Back to the Future NFT set. This is really awesome considering I've mentioned on the channel about how we've rarely gotten George McFly merch. Not only, obviously, this is the first Funko Pop, but out of any toy and collectibles company because of the incident involving Chris McGlover. So it's really cool to finally have it in pop form here. Coming in at number four on my list, limited to 1,900 pieces from the Back to the Future NFT site, Griff 2015. Like I said earlier, I think this is probably my favorite pop out of this set. I think it looks really cool. I love how it does have a little bit of a metallic aspect to it when it comes to his headwear, as well as the baseball bat that he is holding. And I really enjoy that. This has been an awesome set of NFT pops, and this one's definitely my favorite. Coming in at number three on my list is the Hot Topic exclusive glow-in-the-dark six-inch blue eyes Toon Dragon from Yu-Gi-Oh. You know when a Yu-Gi-Oh pop gets announced, 90% of the chance it's going to be on both of our lists, most likely. I'm sure MD will mention it in a little bit, maybe even his number three also. I don't exactly know. But this pop is pretty decent. But the only reason why it's not, let's say, at the top of my list maybe is the fact of we've already seen two blue eyes Toon Dragons. So it's just a remold of something we've already seen. The glow-in-the-dark aspect is nice, and I like the color, but I also don't really like the aspect that it is a six-inch pop so that you can't really display it properly with the other Blue Eyes Toon Dragon pops. Coming in at number three on my list is the Hot Topic exclusive glow-in-the-dark Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. Just like DK had said, he summed it up very well. I mean, it's a six-inch pop. It doesn't need to be a six-inch pop. We have seen multiple of Blue Eyes Toon Dragon before, but this one is my favorite and I will be getting it. And that is why it is pretty high up on this list coming in at number three. Coming in at number two on my list is for the Back to the Future NFT set, limited to 1,900 pieces. It's the Griff 2015. This pop is really awesome. I've always wanted a pop of Griff, so it's really cool that they did it for the NFT set. I think my only gripe and why I don't think it's number one is that I wish it had that awesome hoverboard that he had in the second movie to make it a little bit more oomph. You can make hoverboards four four inch pops we've seen it with a couple of the marty mcflies but nonetheless i think if they would have made that i think it definitely would have been number one coming in at number two on my list i have the gamestop exclusive can you force five pack from dragon ball z this is awesome like i said i do have somewhat of a sentimental feeling towards like burger because i did have the figure but this five pack makes so much sense to have all of these characters together I don't think you necessarily need the singular pops. I do like the glow-in-the-dark versions. I think that those are pretty cool. But I wish this five-pack was glow-in-the-dark, and then maybe it could have been number one on my list. But because it is not, it is just number two. Coming in at number one on my list is, can you guess it? A Back to the Future NFT pop limited to 1,900 pieces. It's Lorraine Baines in a prom dress. Now, I know this seems a bit basic, but this was one of those things that like, I knew that I felt like there was going to be a Lorraine pop for this set, but I didn't know if it was going to be exactly what I wanted. And that's why I think it's number one on my list, because it's her in that prom dress from the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. And they did an excellent job with the detail of the makeup and especially the dress and everything. So it's exactly the perfect Lorraine pop that I was thinking of, hence why it's number one. And coming in at number one on my list is the Vampire McNugget from the McDonald's at Icons lineup. I really enjoy this. I think it's the best out of this new wave of McNuggets pops. I actually already own this pop, so that makes a lot of sense. It's already in my collection, so I definitely love it. McDonald's is one of my favorite 
I guess, like subcategories of ad icons to collect. The McNuggets are really, really cool as well. And there's a whole bunch that you can collect or that Funko can still make, which is great. And I don't know, they just came out at the right time, right before Halloween, which is so awesome. And I don't know, I just really enjoy these pops. And this one is definitely my favorite of the four. All right, so that is going to be the end of this edition of a Funko Podcast. And if you enjoyed this edition of a Funko Podcast, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let us know what your favorite pops are from October 2023. And we hope to see you guys on another edition of a Funko Podcast or a video here on the channel. One, two, three, I'm out of here. Uh-huh. Well, hi, pal. Peace in, peace out.